Welcome back. Time now for our Friday Focus on You. Millions of Americans struggle to lose weight. Now a new study might help explain why so many people fail in their weight loss efforts and why others who do shed extra pounds too often gain them back. Correspondent Scott Goldberg explains. In the fall of 2009, Danny Cahill won season eight of NBC's reality TV show, The Biggest Loser, after shredding an astonishing 239 pounds in seven months. I've gotten my life back. But as the years passed by, more than 100 pounds have crept back, despite Danny's best efforts to keep the weight off. I was exercising three or four times as much as a normal person. And uh, once that stopped, the weight started creeping back on. The same happened to another one of the show's contestants, Dina Mercado. She lost nearly 75 pounds on the show, but has since regained 32 of them. I didn't want anybody to know I was on The Biggest Loser because obviously I don't, I don't look like that anymore. A new study followed 14 of 16 contestants from one season of the show. The researchers monitored them for six years following their dramatic weight loss and found that all but one of them gained much of the weight back. While scientists point out further research is needed, they concluded the contestants' own bodies were to blame. According to the study, the participants had normal metabolisms for their size at the start of the show, but after losing the weight, their metabolisms continued to slow down the mechanism the body uses to return to its original weight further compounding the problem researchers found the group had plummeting levels of leptin a hormone thought to help control appetite leaving them constantly hungry and it's a concept called metabolic adaptation or some people call it the defense of fatness producers of the biggest loser told abc news they are evaluating the study's findings we need to come up with the best way to be healthy because we all know we're still trying to figure it out. Medical experts say obesity needs to be treated as a chronic illness with medication, in some cases surgery, and addressing the psychological and emotional factors. Scott Goldberg, ABC News, New York. Joining us now, our fitness and health guru, Joseph Brandenburg. He's a personal trainer and columnist. He's with True 180 Fitness in the district. Welcome back. Good to be back. We cheer the people who've had these amazing success stories where they go from 400 to 200 or whatever, losing big amounts of weight because we know it's so hard to do. It's amazing though and it's, you feel bad for people who go through all that work and only to, only to, to, to gain some or all of the weight back. Um, so, I mean, like the bottom line for so this metabolic slowdown is sort of twofold. Number one is the most important thing that you can do to prevent the regaining of weight is to do consistent strength training the whole time that you're losing weight and to keep that up afterwards, like a minimum of two days a week. And sort of the other part is that what makes for great television does not make for a great lifestyle. What do you mean? Well, so on The Biggest Loser, you're working out seven or eight hours a day. You've got somebody controlling every morsel of food that you're, that you're eating. You're losing eight, nine, ten pounds a week. Those things make for an exciting television show. They make for drama. You know, they make for a lot of other stuff. But who, those are who all... Who lives like that? Right, no, no, <laughs> hey, right, no one lives like that. You know, like, I don't know, like if you read the articles, uh, one of the people, you know, they quit their job so that they could work out. It's a full-time job. You know, working out eight hours a day, that's a full-time job. So what makes for great television does not make for a great lifestyle. And, you know, excessive exercise. And, you know, as a fitness professional, I actually believe there is such a thing as too much exercise. There's only so much energy that your body is going to expend in a day. And if you are exercising six, seven, eight hours a day, honestly, I think even if you're going over two hours a day, really, you know, you can get great results in an hour. But you go too far, your body is going to compensate for that by spending less elsewhere. And I don't want to get too in the weeds in terms of the science, but I know you, you're into all this stuff and it does appear relevant. The, the issue of do our bodies fight us uh, in terms of this metabolism stuff and these chemicals and, and whatnot in our system, are, are our bodies fighting us as we attempt to reach a, a weight that is our goal? Um, I, I think that there's, there's like conflicting evidence. So there's sort of some research that points one way and some research that, that points another way. But I think that when, from my experience and from what I've seen kind of making sense of the different different sides of research is that your body's going to fight you if you go into the weight loss kind of as if I need to fight my body. So all the things that sort of the really aggressive calorie restriction, these sort of Spartan diets, the ridiculous exercise programs, those are all the things they are going to create tons of pushback from your body. They're going to make you hungry. They're going to, you know, crush your metabolism, crush your thyroid. Um, however, if 
a more reasonable path. It's it's not sexy. You can't you know a television show about somebody working out three hours a week and cleaning up their lunch. There's nothing you know. There's nothing there for a television show. It's not exciting. It's given, not interesting. Given where we are as a nation with weight gain and obesity and all the problems that flow from that, like diabetes and joint issues, et cetera, et cetera, it's clear that the medical community is thinking about this a lot, trying to help people as much as possible. It's also clear that. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a moving target or that there's more we need to know about uh, how we gain weight and how to lose weight and keep it off. Uh, for sure. I mean, there's always room for more research. There's always room for getting better. Um, but I think that, uh, I think that without a doubt, the, one of the most important things that people can do like when, during their weight loss process and after to keep it off is going to be um, strength training. It has been shown consistently that even with weight loss or with a very low calorie diet, if you do strength training consistently, you will either maintain your same resting metabolic rate, even if there's very significant weight loss, and or slightly bump it up. That's not to say that it is miraculous or that it will give you a magic metabolism of an 18-year-old, but it seems to be one of the uh, best and most important weapons that you have. A lot of people think weight loss and they go to cardio. You right. keep mentioning the weight training. Yes. And also just with the strength training, I mean, strength training, just because you're holding a dumbbell, just because you're holding something that's heavy or you're using sort of strength training looking like a stuff, it doesn't mean that you're strength training. I mean, strength training is you are getting stronger. If you couldn't do a pull-up today, you're working towards being able to do a pull-up, et cetera. Pro progress on whatever yeah, it is. Progressive overload of strength, not of conditioning. Not that that's also important. But strength training specifically is what is most important. Joseph Brandenburg, we'll see you next month. Thank you as always. Back with the program.